that is on Q using linked list. Learning outcomes. At end of this session, students will be able to explain Q using linked list in data structure. So before starting with the linked list, so let us have the introduction about the linked list. So in the previous two videos, we have seen the implementation of the queue, that is a linear queue and the circular queue. So the queue was implemented using an array. So now due to the efficient use of memory utilization, we are going to use the queue for the implementation using an linked list. So let us understand what do you mean by an linked list? Okay, so we'll start with the uh, introduction. A linked list is a linear collection of data elements called nodes where the linear order is implemented by means of pointer each node contains a two types of field that is the first field contains the information of the elements and the second field contains the address of the next node in the list suppose as shown in this figure this is known as an the node where it has the two information that is one is that is the first field is the information either it may be integer value or the characters or the whatever you want to store you are going to have the information stored in this like and data and the next which holds the address of the next node if it is only the one node then we have to point through a null here means that is the termination of an linked list here if it is having one more node connecting to this here so what we have to do we have to write the address of the next node okay so this was about the nodes here now we'll see the types of linked list here. So there are three types of linked list. First one is your singly linked list. Second one is your doubly linked list. And the third one is your circular linked list. So as we told in the first uh, slide, so if you are going to have the one more node connected to the first node here, so the address of this node is stored into next value here and it is being connected. And this is the last node in the list so that's why we have to write here null or terminating node here okay so every time whenever you are going to terminate the list we have to mark it with a null similarly if you are going to make use of a doubly linked list so you are going to have this type of node here that is an information here and the next the address of the next node and here the previous address of the node here means in the singly linked list and the doubly linked list the difference is what in doubly linked list you are going to store the previous address of the node here so what is an added advantage here so you can jump from the one place to another in the forward direction as well as in the backward direction here means in singly linked list we can jump only in the forward direction only if you are in somewhere in the middle of the list if you want to come back to search the data or delete the data once again we have to start from the first node only so that is an time consuming in the same manner the added advantage is what so you can jump to the previous nodes for searching and deleting and you can jump to the next node also but what is the disadvantage it uses more memory than the singly linked list here the information is there and the two pointers are used to store the next and the previous address here now we are going to see the circular linked list it is just like a link, linear linked list in which the second part of the last node contains the address of the first in the list. That is, the second field of the last node does not point to the null pointer, rather it points back to the beginning of the linked list. Means what? So, here what we have seen, that is, it is going to point towards the next node. Here we have seen the it is pointing towards the next node and the previous node. And if you want to terminate this linked list, we have to mark with the null node. But in circular linked list, there will be no last node here. So that's why there will be no null node here. Okay. So what will happen? So it will point towards the first node here. Means here in last node of the circular linked list, the address of the first node is stored here. Means it will jump from this location to this location, this location to this location and this location will store the address of the this location. So that's why it is known as a circular linked list. But it is just an, like a linear linked list here. So what are the advantages of uh, using a linked list over an array? So the linked list are the dynamic data structure 
that is uh, second one is what here the efficient memory utilization insertion and the deletions are easier and efficient and easy for the complex application so what do you mean by this insertion and deletions are easier and effective and uh, the linked list are dynamic the data structure means you can increase the size of an list and decrease the uh, size of the list at the runtime here so in array whenever you are going to allocate the memory it is memory is allocated at the compile time only so if you want to increase the uh, size of an array you cannot increase the size of an array at the runtime here if you want to decrease the size of an array to use the effective memory utilization we cannot decrease that but in linked list we are going to make use of a dynamic data structure so that's why we can increase or shrink the uh, list at the runtime here so if you do that that is known as an effective memory utilization now insertion and deletions are easier and uh, efficient means what so if you uh, are using an array if you want to delete the element in between the array so we have to go to that place and delete that and again once again we have to shift the other elements to the previous location so it becomes tedious but in the linked list what we have to do if you delete the elements in between the two uh, linked list <coughs> so what we have to do we have to just uh, connect uh, the previous nodes address to the next node here so there is an insertion and deletion are becomes easy and it is useful uh, for the complex applications so array is not useful for the complex application so this is the representation of an linked list so this is a uh, the uh, structure defined for the linked list implemented here now suppose uh, if you are going to make use of a single linked list uh, which has only the two information that is first field uh, contains the information and the second field contains the uh, address of the next node if you want to write in the structure so that is written in this manner that is struct node int data which where the information is stored in that field and the second node struct node next which holds the address of the next node here so uh, this is this uh, struct node has been uh, defined for the singly linked list if it is used for the doubly linked list what we have to do one more uh, point we have to add that is a struct node star previous means to store the address of the previous node here and how you are going to increase or shrink the uh, list at the runtime here so there are two functions that is malloc and callocs are used to create the node at the runtime okay if you want to make it free then you have to make use of a free function means that if you are allocating more uh, memory at the runtime and you are not going to use that memory so you can make use of a free function to uh, decrease the size of a memory here means what whenever you are required the uh, memory at that time you can allocate that memory by using malloc and calloc functions and you can make it free also if you don't want okay so that is an advantage of using a linked list or an array here uh, so now we'll see the implementation of queue using a linked list so up till now what we have seen uh, the queue was implemented using an array so in array we cannot increase or decrease the size of an queue at the runtime here uh, so that uh, disadvantage has been removed using an linked list here uh, in queue uh, is implemented first in first out and this is the same thing we have to implement using a linked list also that is first in first out here okay uh, in uh, queue we have seen the two operations that is nq and dq operations uh, in NQ operations, we have to check the uh, full condition that is an overflow condition and in DQ operation, we are going to check an empty condition that is an underflow condition. But when you are going to implement the queue using linked list, there is no full condition because uh, you can allocate the memory as the uh, compiler will allocate that. So there are infinite number of memory is allocated here. Means there, there is no tension to have how many memory is allocated to use here. So there will be no full condition uh, during an, the uh, NQ operation. But uh, while doing an uh, DQ operation, we have to check an empty condition because is there any linked list uh, present in the queue. Okay. So we'll start with the implementation of an queue using an linked list. The linked list, the representation of queue does not have any in restriction on the number of elements it can hold here. The elements in the linked list are allocated dynamically, hence it can grow as long as there is sufficient memory available for the dynamic allocation here. So that is an advantage here. 
in the same manner what we have seen in the previous video that is the nq operation dq operation and the display operation for the queue in the same manner we have to implement the queue using an linked list here we have to make use of an pointer which holds the address of the next node here so uh, before starting to this uh, lecture you should be able to understand how the pointers are going to work so we'll start with an algorithm uh, that is an insert an element into the queue so uh, we can use the following steps to insert the new node into the queue here so what is the first step in the same way uh, in the queue what we used to do in the linear queue we used to directly insert here so here first step in the queue is what we have to create the new node here that is one node you have to uh, create with a given value suppose we have taken the value of 10 so that will be the node 10 and the set the new node to the next it is pointing towards the next uh, to the null and then check whether the queue is empty so how you are going to check that is rare is equal to equal to null here also the same two pointers are used to track the record of an queue that is front pointer and the rare pointer here yeah uh, that is if the queue is an empty then you have to see that rare is equal to equal to null if it is empty then front set front equal to new node and the rare is equal to new node okay next step is what if it is not empty then set rare of next equal to new node and rare is equal to new node here means the new node will be allocated at that time here now if you want to delete an element from the queue what we have to do these are the following steps you have to perform check the whether queue is empty or not so in the previous thing inserting we are not going to check the full condition here so directly you can insert the uh, new node here every time here so there is no necessary that you are going to check the full condition here but you have to check the empty condition is there any list in the queue to delete that so first check that condition how you are going to check that front is equal to equal to null if it is empty then display queue is an empty step 3 is what if it is not empty then define node pointer temp temp one variable you are going to take and set it to the that is front then then set front is equal to front of next and delete temp means temp is required to delete that element from the queue here that is free temp this is a function used to free that node here okay so this is an the algorithm useful to write an and deleting an element from the queue next if you want to display the elements in the queue so in the same manner is there any uh, node in the queue so for that we have to check whether the queue is empty if it is uh, empty so you cannot display if queue is an empty and terminate that function if it is not empty then the node pointer temp is initialized with the front pointer and display temp of data is equal to temp and move it to the next node repeat the same until the temp reaches to the rare that is temp of next is not equal to null and step 5 is what the display temp of data is equal to null so in this manner if you write an algorithm for this you can have the displaying of the element of a queue uh, so these are the my references and thank you.